Aloha, everyone. We have the right to this feels know. like a revival tent. We have the right <laughs> <to know. laughs> and I'm so glad to see the people who are here are actually the choir. So the ones we're talking to are just a few here who say they know nothing about GMO, and then to the cameras that are going to broadcast this on YouTube and help people get more educated. That's my background. I'm an educator. I'm a doctor of acupuncture and oriental medicine. And I come the view, from the viewpoint of health. Um, some of my patients coming to me are talking about stomach ache. They got cancer. And the common factors there are eating Roundup, uh, Roundup papaya, rainbow papaya on a regular basis and being exposed to Roundup. So. It's becoming too obvious to me that GMO has to be stopped. In the beginning, when we first did this educational process, we would just say, oh, we'll just talk about the GMO. We won't talk about Monsanto. But it's coming to the point where unless you acknowledge the gorilla in the room, you're just avoiding the whole point. So I'm becoming more adamant about speaking out about the corruption and about Monsanto and the other companies that are here in Hawaii that are destroying our environment. I have here a, um, an old chart, it's up to 2008, but it shows the five major companies um, that are from Germany, Switzerland, and then Monsanto is the biggest king. And I'll pass this around so you can take a look at it. These are the companies that are destroying the planet. You've got Monsanto, you've got Syngenta, DuPont, here in Hawaii they're called Pioneer. You've got Dow, and you have uh, Bayer and BASF. BASF has left Germany because they were no longer wanted there, and they've come to Hawaii, and they're very welcomed here. So how, how does that figure? So this is something that we got to take a look at. Monsanto has been around for about 100 years, and they've always been involved in chemicals. Um, they're the ones who put Agent Orange down on the Vietnamese jungles. They're the ones who developed DDT, dioxin, Pozolac, which is still being put in the cows to make them give more milk. So when you're drinking milk from Medigold or, or um, Formos, you're drinking Pozolac, which is bo bovine growth hormone. So when you drink that milk or you eat that cheese or eat, you eat that, that yogurt, you're getting the bovine growth hormone in your system. And for the longest time, Monsanto would not allow people to label their milk cartons with the Pozolac, with the um, bovine growth hormone, um, uh, saying that they didn't have it in there. But finally, they had to change the rules because a lawsuit was brought against Monsanto and they realized they couldn't keep it up. So now we're allowed to see labeling on milk cartons that do not have bovine growth hormone in it. And that's where we want to go with the, with the GMO. But it's going to take a lot more work. Um, and so that's why we're here. It's an educational pro process. I don't like to call this a battle. I don't like to fight. I'm not a warrior. But I'm very strong on health and the empowerment of the people. People do have a right to know. Um, we have aspartame on the label. We have MSG on the label. So why don't we have GMO or non-GMO on the label? Right now, it's only on a volunteer basis. We have the Non-GMO Project, which is a uh, organization which is certifying people to show that the products that they're selling can carry the Non-GMO Project label, but that there is less than 0.7% GMO in those products. So that's a start. And the legislature has been trying to dance around the issue, saying that there are already 70, 80 percent of the food out there that is GMO. So they're saying to the guys who, who are non-GMO, well, why don't you guys go label it? Which would be much easier. But the fact is, we want to call the criminals on what they're doing. Because by labeling GMO, then nobody will buy their products, anybody who has any kind of awareness about what GMO is. And therefore, we're going to keep insisting that we label GMO and not skirt the issue by saying the non-GMO guys got to label their food. So that's why we got to keep working at this. And again, it's an educational process. I've been involved in this for three years. I heard about the GMO tarot. I wasn't involved at that point. When I came back to Hawaii from Europe in 1991, I was hearing with my friends that they were living up in Wailua and they're getting poisoned. 
And they said, all these multinational companies are here, you know, and they're poisoning the soil. They're doing GMO. And at the time, I didn't even know what GMO was. But it's been a, a good long process of about 17 years where I've come to understand GMO is not good. And I know all of you already know that. And Hector and Mary will be sharing with you exactly what GMO is. I'm coming more from the community aspect, that unless each one of you says, I have the power to do something, it's not going to happen. That's probably a blessing that the labeling bill was not passed this year, because we weren't ready for it. And the state uh, rally that we had last Tuesday, February 20th, was 21st, was an extremely powerful statement on the part of the people. Because the Hawaiians came together, the environmentalists came together, the mothers, the housewives, the grandmothers, everybody showed up and they said, this is not good for anybody. How can you claim that this is good for Hawaii's economy? And until the people come together in thousands, like Tulsi said, it's still not going to happen. So the awareness has to grow even more. And I think by next year, we'll be ready for them. OK, I just want to show you this wonderful chart that Dr. Lauren Pang has put together. And it makes it very easy for people to, who don't understand anything about GMO exactly how it works. They will have you think that it's a very precise science, that they will shoot the gene into the seed, and that will then put the bacteria into the seed, which will make it resistant to herbicide. Um, it's not that simple. They say they're putting it here. But it may not go there. It may go here, or it may go somewhere else that they don't even know. And they really don't know what they're doing. So that's why I'm so concerned about the rainbow papaya that certain lobbyists will say, well, if it weren't for the transgenic papaya, we would not have organic papaya. That's a total lie. And this person was allowed to say that on the news, on KITV, and get away with it. This person is pro propagating lies all the time. And so you, each one of you here, probably knows more than this woman does. But this is what happens when you put that gene into the DNA. Anything can happen. You can open up a, a, a cancer gene. You can open up an aging gene. You can open up the allergy gene. And so when that happens, you have absolutely no, no control over what's happening to you or to the generations to come. And what has been most obvious with a GMO is that we're seeing patterns of infertility. And very possibly, in the long term, we want to reduce the population because there are many, many people on the earth who are not getting enough food. But when the Monsanto companies come and say they're here to feed the millions, that is a total lie. And we know that. Because all they're here for is to sell more chemicals and to poison us even further. So Seeds of Truth is a grassroots organization that goes around to different areas of Oahu and holds panels. We had a TV program on Olelo. Now funding's going to be taken away from Olelo because you know, the government doesn't want us to get out in there and talk about these kind of things. But the people are here. You know, We can put up a revival tent anywhere on Oahu, and we can be talking about these kind of things. We just had a very successful event in Kailua where 100 people showed up to watch the movie Islands at Risk and to hear Hector and to hear um, Mark Ferguson from Down to Earth talk about GMO and why it's so bad for us and why we need labeling. So the movement has already begun. I mean, I'm so pleased to see the momentum. And I see the people here who are so open and so receptive to this information. I mean, you already know everything you need to know. We just got to move. We just got to do the action. So I really thank you all for being here. And we're going to pass around an email list as well as a petition to label GMO on a national level. So if you can support us in these initiatives, we'll, we will be successful next year. Thank you.